seated. Could the children please come forward? Hurricane Halle, all right. <laughs> she is the church. Yes. Hey. hey. How's it going? Good to see you. Oh. I went to the beach. You went to the beach? Yeah. All right. Did you have fun? Yeah. Cool. I heard you went to Area 51. Oh, Daniel did. Oh, Daniel did. Yeah. And there was an alien. There was an alien? What? <laughs> he didn't get him, did he? Yeah. No? Okay, good. It was not green anymore. It wasn't green anymore? It was an old alien. Yeah. <laughs> Probably ate one of those di uh, diners in the desert. That's why it was green. <laughs> Do you like peppermints? You want with this? Okay. All right, so... If your mom tells you, please go clean your room, and you say, okay, mom, I will, but you don't clean your room, what does that mean? Did you actually clean your room? So just saying something doesn't necessarily mean you do it, right? So when you say something, you got to back it up with action, right? And so as Christians, we want to keep our word. And we want to, when we say something, we want to follow it up with action. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I tell a friend, hey, I'm going to be over to help you draw a colorful picture. But we don't go over there, right? And so then we, we need to keep our word, right? So if we tell them we're going to do something, we need to, to keep our word and do it. Yesterday, my daddy got me. My papa got me peppermints. Your papa got you peppermints? Yeah. Awesome. Three? Wow. All right, would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for your great love. And thank you, Father, for teaching us how to act. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Thank you so much. I got a cup for me. Did you say thank you? Yeah. you. Race you. Why the kingdom of heaven is like a little child. I'll tell you what. All right. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we hear your word today, may it do its amazing transformative work in our lives and in our hearts. May it continue to grow us as people of God and into the image of your son, Jesus. And may it help us to live out a faith-filled life in this world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So today's sermon is Walk the Walk. Walk the Walk. And uh, I want to start off with this parable that Jesus told, found in Matthew 21, verse 28 through 38, or excuse me, 32. And just to give you a little background, Jesus is teaching the people, and I imagine that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, so the scribes and the Pharisees, the, the, the authoritative people, uh, the learned men, are in the crowd. I'm sure they had some crowd plants that followed Jesus all around, and they're always listening to Jesus to find out how they can get him, because they don't like him. They don't like the way he teaches, and he doesn't pay homage to them. In fact, he doesn't uh, fall all over them like most people do. Oh, here, take this seat at the head of the table. Oh, here, like they're used to. And then one striking thing is, is that Jesus teaches with such authority. Now, these men are learned men, and so they look at theology and philosophy in a different way. They say, well, maybe this, maybe that, maybe you could argue this point. But Jesus taught succinctly. He said, this is it. This is the word of God. This is what you must do. And so they were just amazed. And the crowds were amazed at the authority that Christ taught with. And so here they come, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they ask Jesus, where do you get this authority from? Where does your authority come from? And so he asks them a question. He says, well, 
I'll tell you where my authority comes from. If you tell me where John's uh, baptism came from and where John's authority to baptize came from. Well, they were, of course, scared of the people because the people loved John. And so they didn't answer. We don't know. He says, well, I won't tell you either. Instead, he tells them a parable. And this is the parable that he tells them. Matthew chapter 21, verse 28 through 32. It says, this is the parable of the two sons. But what do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first one and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he replied. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the man went to the second son and told him the same thing. I will, sir, he said, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father. The first they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, are entering the kingdom ahead of you. Sorry about that. Got a little ahead of you. I, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in a righteous way, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God and praise be to God. So Jesus is telling them, look, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the drunkards, the people that you think are the dregs of society are going to enter the kingdom of heaven before you. And they just couldn't stand it. How can this be? How can these tax collectors and prostitutes, we're holy men. We're righteous, aren't we? Well, righteousness, the definition of righteousness is right action. Right action makes you righteous. When you act right, that makes righteousness. And these men, though they may have been learned, and though they may have tried to follow the law uh, in a very legalistic way, they didn't act it out. They didn't produce fruit. They didn't show it. They said yes to God with their lips, but their hearts were far from God. And so Christ is calling us to walk the walk without producing without us showing our faith through action. Faith comes through action. Just like we talked about in Romans before. We talked about how do you get saved? It says, believe, uh, uh, confess with your mouth that Christ uh, uh, is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead and you will be saved. Well, the confession part is backed up by the belief part. It's an action. An action in these men, that these, these, these men and women who are tax collectors and prostitutes and the dregs of society, according to these Pharisees and Sadducees, responded with action. They didn't just say, yes, Lord. They committed to it by repenting. And because they uh, uh, committed to it, their actions followed, which was repentance. And so that's why Jesus says, because they believed and you didn't. And so I want to uh, look at this again. John, the beloved disciple, again, says the same, something extremely similar. He says, dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and truth. With actions and truth. I tell you, uh, Ezekiel, in the Old Testament, God experienced it so many times. You praise me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. And here we have in Ezekiel, so my people come to you as usual, sit before you and hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. Although they express love with their mouth and their hearts, and they pursue dishonest gain. I tell you, uh, people, when you tell people you're a Christian, when you tell people you're a Christian, they look at you. They examine your life. They look at how you talk, how you walk, how you express yourselves, how you deal with other people, how you deal with tragedy. 
People are watching. In fact, when you say I'm a Christian, you've become a beacon. In fact, the world takes notice and says, is he really? Is she really? And they watch what you do, what you say, how you live your life. In fact, uh, I know people have said it before, but sometimes you're the only Jesus someone will ever see in this world. And there are people that will never darken the door of a church. And so when you say you're a Christian, you immediately become the representative of the church. What the church is like, what kind of people the church are. And so Christ has called us to live out a consistent life. And the apostles and the prophets, again, live out consistently through right action. And yes, we're human. We stumble. We make mistakes. And we are sinners. But Christ has called us to get up and to, to act out our faith through action. Not just words. Not just stopping at words. Saying, yes, Lord, but not going. Both sons were wrong. But the one that did what his father wanted was the first one. You know, I had a, a pastor call me from Houston and he said, hey, uh, I got this woman in this community down there and she needs help. And so he was a Methodist minister. And so, uh, you know, uh, I don't I'm not a plumber, but she had some plumbing issues. And so I called around I put the word out in the community and someone uh, came and they fixed her thing. And she started praising God at the top of her lungs. She was wheelchair bound. I had another pastor. He called me. He says, my daughter is, uh, they took an echocardiogram and um, her valves weren't working. And she was going to need two stents. Two arteries were 90% blocked. And um, so I said, well, let, let's pray. And then I'll call some friends and we'll, we'll start a prayer chain. And so we prayed over her. And we, I prayed together with him as well. And then I prayed together with his wife. And, and they called me. I said, well, call me after they get out of surgery. And they were, they were going to go in. They were going to try to fix the valve if they could. Well, they go in and they see the heart. There's no longer zero blockage. And her valves are working perfectly. They have a picture of a heart that has 90% blocks. Then they have a valve that is not opening uh, shutting. All right. They have a picture of it. So they have a picture of before prayer and they have a picture of after prayer. That's a true story. I just found that out uh, two days ago. That was a, a, a response to people in action, people praying for one another, people getting together and praying those issues. In fact, we have a picture of before prayer and a picture after we have the echocardiogram. And then we have those doctor's uh, images of when they went in the heart and everything was completely fixed. She says, this heart's perfect. That's God. When, God. when God's people move and they act out their faith, God moves in mighty ways. When we lift each other up, God hears those prayers. When we lean on each other, God sees that and blesses that. It comes through right action. That's righteousness. Through right action. Your actions speak louder than any words ever will. When you call yourself a Christian, you're opening your life for inspection. And your life becomes an active witness for Jesus Christ. The positive news is that people will respond to your good deeds and thoughtful acts of caring. In fact, people will want to know more about the Savior that you worship. Because of your love, because of your deeds, God uses that to transform lives. That's your faith when it's more walk than talk. I want to share a story with you. It's a true story from World War II. And it, shortly after World War II came to a close, Europe was picking up the pieces of, of everything being shattered. I mean, everything was carpet bombed and, and, uh, and much of the old country was ravaged by the war and there's nothing but ruins. And perhaps the saddest thing in World War II, especially Europe, was the orphaned children 
that were starving in the streets of those war-torn cities who had lost their families. And, and so early one chilly morning, an American soldier making his way back to the barracks in London, as he turned the corner in his Jeep, he spotted a little boy, a lad, with his nose pressed against the window of a pastry shop. And inside, the cook was kneading the dough for a fresh batch of donuts. And the hungry boy stared in silence, watching every move. And the soldier pulled his jeep to the curb, stopped and got out and walked quietly over where the little fellow was standing. And through the steam on the window caused by the boy's mouth, his, his mouth hung open and mouth watering and drooling, he saw these piping hot donuts come out and these pastries and watched the baker put them in the glass case carefully. The boy salivated and released the sight groan as he watched the cook place them onto the glass and closed counter. The soldier's heart went out to the nameless orphan as he stood beside him. Son, would you like some of those? The boy was startled. Oh yeah, I would. The American stepped inside, bought a dozen of them, put, put, the bag, put them in a bag, and walked back to where the lad was standing in this foggy, cold London morning. He smiled, he held out the bag, and simply said, here you go. As he turned to walk away, he felt a tug at his coat. He looked back, and the child quietly asked, Mister, are you God? We're never more like God than when we do as the Lord has called us to do, to imitate Him. <clears throat> God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that the world would not perish but have everlasting life. Words can be powerful, but much more powerful if they're backed up by action. And is your lifestyle representing Jesus in a positive manner with your deeds? And if they're not, I have good news for you. God is a God of try-overs, do-overs, second chances, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Every day that you wake up is a new day, a fresh start. And say, Lord, yesterday's gone. Today is the day. That's the good news. That's the gospel news. Luke, Luke chapter 6, verse 47 is the story of the man who put, uh, that Jesus tells of the parable, and he built his house on the rock. And this is what uh, Jesus says in verse 47. He says, I will show you what it is like, uh, what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them. So Jesus is saying, this is what it's like. This is an example of what it's like if you hear my words and you act on them. You put them into practice. And then he tells the story of a man who built his house on the rock, a man who built his house on the sand. We know the story. So the man who puts his, his, uh, Jesus' uh, words into action is the guy who built his house on a rock. His life is rock solid. His life is built on solid foundation. His life is going to and overcome the storms and, 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 and everything. So when we listen to Christ and we put His words into action, that's when God's manifold blessing, His, His encouragement, His power and growth come into our lives. When you put in, into practice the teachings of Jesus, your life is rock solid. You're secure. And so, I call us to remember that the world is watching. May God help us. May God help us to live out the Christian witness in the view of all. That they may glorify our Father in heaven. In His mighty name we pray. Amen.